Hey folks, Joe Valley here. Welcome to another episode of the Quiet Light Podcast. Today's podcast is sponsored by my Amazon guy. I know the founder, Stephen Pope. He's a good guy. I've seen him all over YouTube creating great free edu- educational content for uh, scaling up, leveling up your Amazon account. If you need help with SEO design, managing your Amazon catalog, Whatever you need, check him out at myamazonguy.com. And now for today's podcast, it's all about uh, virtual assistants, hiring, training, and scaling up with virtual assistants. Reggie Young is our guest today. He's reggieyoung.com. He does a great job in terms of creating courses and SOPs on how to train and scale with virtual assistants. You can find it at reggieyoung.com for us vault. We talk about a number of different things in here. First, how to find them. There's some job boards, there's some outsourcing folks, um, and how to create good culture for virtual assistants, a little bit of difference in terms of the cost. But something we struggle with here at Quiet Light is creating SOPs for them so that they have plenty of work to do. Um, I find personally myself, I've got a great virtual assistant and sometimes I just know she's not busy enough. Uh, and I wish I had more work for her. And the reality is I do, but I haven't created SOPs for her to go ahead and follow an attack. And Reggie talks about that quite a bit. And he's got courses available as well at reggieyoung.com for us vault. So let's jump into it. This is all about scaling, uh, growing, sourcing uh, with virtual assistants. Here we go. Reggie Young, welcome to the Quiet Light Podcast. How are you today, man? Doing well. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm glad you're here. And uh, I think you're in uh, Hawaii at the moment. Is that correct? Yes. Currently at an Airbnb in Waikiki. Um, I was born and raised in Hawaii, so I'm really glad to be back home. Uh, But this time, really, really close to the beach. Well, good for you. Good for you. That's the life of an entrepreneur. You get to go uh, where you want to go, whenever you want to go there. In most cases, until you get uh, too big with lots of staff that uh, dictate that you need to be in the office. Anyway, um, why don't you give the folks some background on yourself, who you are, what you do, that kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. So uh, Reggie Young, again, born and raised in Hawaii. I joined the military when I was 18 years old. And a few years into the military, my bosses thought I'd be a good fit for a uh, military university called the Air Force Academy. I went there for like four or five years, graduated, was a nuclear missiles officer for five years. During that five-year period, I decided that I, that business was my passion and my obsession. So. What I did in my free time was sell iPhone six cases online. And my mom was actually my only customer. And I realized really quickly that I need to take a course and I really need to double down on how to sell online. So I tested different business models. I started high ticket drop shipping. My first store did about $64,000 in revenue the first one to two months. Uh, came across some issues there, but still had about three to four years left on my contract at the military at the time. So I decided to dive into private label Amazon. I eat, sleep, and breathe Amazon since then. And in like 2017, 2018, I was able to replace my income, sold my first Amazon private label business late 2020. And since then, I've been consulting for other e-commerce businesses while still operating my own. Pretty impressive resume. Well, first first and foremost, thank you for your service. Appreciate it. And congratulations on your success as an entrepreneur and your exit as well. And so now you're, you're consulting and coaching. And one of the things you and I talked about that we wanted to focus on here was how to hire, train, and scale with virtual assistants, which seems to be just common sense, but at the same time, really kind of hard. And I'll just admit openly that I've got an amazing VA in the Philippines. And I know there are times when she's going, gee, do I really have a job? There's nothing for me to do because I have a difficult time choosing tasks for her to do. She's got big month long tasks, but keeping her busy all the time is, is, is a challenge for me, Reggie. So let's talk about that. How do you, how do you jump in? Um, for what's the benefit of a VA and, and let's go from there. Yeah. I mean, the easiest way to put it is it, it's a way of working, uh, you know, on your business, not so much in it. So when you hire your first VA, you're really able to solve that first problem, which is scaling past one. And to answer your question more directly, how do you keep a virtual assistant gainfully employed? What I do is I, I have a project management, like a Asana type of CRM board. 
And what I do is I, I order their tasks from top to bottom, from like most important all the way down to least important. And when they're done with all their tasks, they eventually will hit a task that I call the sharpen skills task. And what that is, is an Excel spreadsheet with a list of skills that I want them to learn. And it can be anything from watch this YouTube video to take this Facebook ads course to um, research whatever you want and, and provide notes and updates. Uh, so that's for me personally, how I'm able to keep them gamefully employed. Generally speaking, I have enough business ideas that they're, they never actually hit the sharpened skills task. But if they do, I want them working on things that will benefit the business, whether it's researching a new type of tool, a new idea, or working on projects and initiatives that are a little bit higher up in the sales funnel. Well, let, let's jump back to the beginning in terms of the reason to hire a VA that's beyond, you know, you need another body. You know, let's a VA versus, you know, in the Philippines, for instance, where, where mine is versus uh, somebody in the US. For me, it's two reasons. And you tell me if it's, you know, pretty similar across the board, if there are other reasons as well. Number one, financially, um, I've got a full time virtual assistant for a fraction of the cost that it would be here in the States. Um, we're talking about like a third. Uh, in worst case scenario, I think of the cost. Um, and second is that I find um, the VA, so we've got several here at Quiet Light, but I find them to be very, very committed and dedicated, appreciative and loyal, um, as long as they treat them well and pay them well. That the combination of the two, there's a big financial savings and there's a real dedication from them to want to um, be the best that they can be. Those two compared to, in some cases, um, a U.S. Uh, employee where the cost will be much higher. There's benefits that go along with it. And then, you know, sometimes there's a lot of job hopping that goes along with it. Um, what do you see as the, the top, you know, two or three reasons to go with a virtual assistant versus uh, somebody in the U.S. or U.K. or wherever you might be living? Yeah, well, definitely the, the, the cost savings is incomparable. Uh, and especially if you hire in a, in a smart way, you can get that, those costs down even, even more. But one of the big narratives that I see in the space is kind of the opposite, that virtual assistants are not dedicated. They're not committed, uh, that they, they don't care about pursuing, like pushing the, your business goals forward. But the fact that you've had that experience tells me that you have a really good positive work culture and that you pay them and compensate them well for their work. And that's actually a failure of what a lot of other people who outsource to the Philippines or other countries offshore is they don't, they don't have that positive work culture and they're not compensating them well enough. Like, yes, it, it can be cheap. I start most of my virtual assistants off at just a few hundred dollars a month, but I have such good work culture and a good setup of how to work and how to communicate with me that I rarely have a virtual assistant leave my team. Uh, so again, cost savings, absolutely huge. Besides that, I think you're able to scale super quick. So if you have a, a good system in place, hiring a virtual assistant can happen in, in, for me, less than a few days and have them plug into your system. And the, the risk tolerance of adding that additional user to your business becomes significantly lower and allows you to scale a lot faster versus hiring someone from the States who you know, wants to go through a whole process and you have a lot more of a financial commitment to them. Hiring a virtual assistant is super, super easy and it allows you to scale just incredibly quickly. Let's talk about how you're hiring them. Well, I know that um, when we found ours, I think we have three or four now, but the one that specifically works for me, I, I don't know, I hired them through some random agency and uh, turned out to be great. It was a great fit. And then I discovered that they were getting maybe half the money that I was paying the agency. And there was a buyout clause. And I jumped on it and ended up paying them the full amount. And so they went from, you know, something like $350 a month to $725 a month for the same amount of work. It was costing me the same. I chose not to save any money, but I wanted to make sure that they were being well compensated and becoming very loyal. And this is for a full-time employee who, by the way, will work whatever hours I want them to work. You know, I've offered to allow them to work the day shift during their time. 
And they're like, no, 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 no. We like the night shift. I love the same hours as we have here on the East coast. And so we stuck with it. So that's, I think compensation wise, I've got a full-time employee for $725 a month, fully dedicated during my hours of operation. Um, it was with an agency. Uh, how are you finding your folks? It's up to that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been hiring virtual assistants since uh, since I first started in 2015. Even when I wasn't profitable, I was hiring virtual assistants. Uh, so I've hired all over the place, job boards, um, different websites, services, agencies, and I've helped other businesses hire as well. So I've seen a ton of different ways in which people on board find virtual assistants. For me specifically, I use a website called onlinejobs.ph. And there are a lot of other platforms out there. I love to outsource to the Philippines. One, because I'm part Filipino, I understand their culture. But the I find that the, when you're outsourcing for a virtual assistant, there's two main things that I look for. The first is, can they speak English really well? And the second is, do they have a, a decent to strong internet connection? And I feel like the Filipino culture and the workforce out in the Philippines has those two. Whereas if I go to other countries, the internet isn't as stable and the English isn't as strong. And then after that, I look for like any type of critical thinker. When I'm able to pair all three of those together, you're, I'm able to set the foundation for a really, really strong remote employee, regardless of the skill that I'm trying to outsource them, outsource them for. I can train them up myself, get a virtual assistant at a low cost and really start to scale super quickly. So those are the things I look for. Uh, those are the things that I hire for and, and where I ultimately hire. But to be honest, you can hire anywhere. Uh, one of my friends, what he does is he will make the job template and then he'll blast it everywhere to a few Facebook groups because there's Facebook groups with like 50,000 virtual assistants and you'll get bogged down by applicants left and right. What I love to do is cast a wide net. So my template is more geared towards cast the widest net possible when it comes to getting your visibility, like your, your um, application out there. And I actually use another virtual assistant to scrub through at least the one to 200 applications that I'll get and filter down by uh, internet speed tests, country location, uh, you know, a lot of the places that I get applications sent to will have to accomplish some type of uh, personality test. So an IQ test, I'm only taking after 200 applicants, the highest IQ, fast internet, you know, most of them will have college degrees and some type of experience in, in what I'm looking to hire. And by kind of casting that wide net and filtering down, I'm able to take 5% of a list of 200 people and uh, end up getting really high quality applicants without having to do much work. Yeah. So, you know, onlinejobs.ph is a great resource if you're going to go out and, um, you know, go through the process that you've gone through. And we've had John on the podcast. Um, it, it really a, a great resource to cast a wide net in terms of trying to find um, a, a virtual assistant in the Philippines. Another option, and this is this goes to the culture, Reggie, I'm curious as to what you do. You know, I found that when I could have my VAs, uh, on a conference call together and in a WhatsApp chat together so that they were, they were joining forces and being a team that it built the culture that we're trying to uh, generate here at, at quiet light that, that, that benefited uh, them personally, us as a company and, and the project that they were working on as well. And um, there's a company out there. I was, I happened to be at the ECF boot camp uh, last week and uh, had a chance to meet with um, uh, staffoutsourcing.com, the founder of it. Let me just pull that up just to make sure I'm giving the right uh, URL, folks. Yeah, it's staffoutsourcing.com. What they do there, Reggie, is they've got Class A office building in Cebu, which is one of the biggest cities in the Philippines. Um, it's kind of like if you imagine the financial district of downtown Boston or something, um, you know, a larger city where it's impressive and you're excited to go to work. It's the kind of environment that they have there. And they actually hire, they, they do all of the vetting of the Filipinos, the VAs that you just talked about. You know, you've got a VA uh, vetting all the VAs and giving them all these tests and whatnot. These folks are, are like, you know, they're a staffing company, but 
um, all the folks that go to work there, let's just say that there were five VAs that Quiet Light hired, they'd all work together in cubicles beside each other as Quiet Light. I could even like buy them, you know, Quiet Light shirts that they'd wear to work every day if we chose to. Um, and then they're part of a team, an office together with other coworkers in that location. It does come at a cost, right? Because staffoutsourcing.com is going to, you know, provide the overhead. They get benefits, right? They get benefits, which is not what my current VAs get. So it would ultimately co cost me about twice as much for my current VAs. But at the same time, I'm going from roughly seven to eight hundred to you know seventeen to eighteen hundred, eighteen hundred dollars a month for a full time employed VA uh, that has health benefits. And did you know, Reggie, that one of the requirements by law in the Philippines is that when somebody has a full time job, they get an annual bonus of one month's pay. Were you aware of that? Yeah. Yeah. So they call that the twelfth month or the thirteenth month. Yeah. Uh, in the Philippines, yeah, and it's it's generally expected. Uh, but most virtual assistants won't say that, but understanding their culture is super important. So again, that's one of the things, you know, when we, when we work offshore, we have to understand their culture, their perspective, their, their tendencies towards management. And when you're able to do that, you're able to create, you know, like positive work culture. And, and it's, it's an amazing thing to bring virtual assistants together. And there's, like you just talked, you talked about using a service that allows virtual assistants to come into the office, which one solves one of the biggest problems with outsourcing, which is a stable internet connection. So you have that. Exactly. Ready. Yep. Then positive work culture, super important. You're creating that team cohesion there. The way that I create team cohesion in a remote setting is one, I actually usually end up hiring their friends. Mm. Uh, so many people on my team, their, their wives are, are also on there on the team or their best friend is on the team. Like for example, one of my best virtual assistants during COVID, he was a security uh, officer at the, at the, at the airport and never done e-commerce before, but he is such a critical thinker. He speaks English really well and I'm able to train him up on everything. He manages my website. He's done backend coding for me before he has post edited some of the content that you you'll see on my social media. Uh, and I was able to kind of create that positive work culture by hiring friends of friends, as long as they met certain requirements. And then that creates like team cohesion and, you know, team cohesion can come in different aspects of sometimes I'll give a monthly bonus and I'll require that monthly bonus to be spent on a team dinner. And because they're friends of friends, a lot of my virtual assistant teams actually end up forming like little pockets all over the Philippines. So they'll have like little micro groups and, Three or four of them will will go to a location and have dinner together. Uh, we just got a donation uh, to the business to support uh, families on the ground. And when I got that donation, I tasked my team with, "Hey, go ahead and distribute this uh, these funds the best way that you want to." So they chose the nonprofits to work with. They went out there together as a team, um, and it's been super powerful and, and very motivating. Uh, to build that team cohesion, you end up reducing a lot of friction in your business and it creates a lot of trust both ways. Yeah. I like that idea of hiring uh, friends and family. I think that's essential over there. Here in the US, I don't necessarily uh, think it's a great idea because uh, there's a closer connection if you're the friends and if they're your family, it's harder to uh, let them go. Um, on the other side of the world, it might be a little bit more disconnected and easier to do that if business required that. So folks, uh, onlinejobs.ph is where Reggie generally goes to find his people. Uh, staffoutsourcing.com would be another option for you. If you want a guaranteed stable internet location in Cebu where they can physically go into the office and sit in cubicles together, they get health benefits and they'd get that 13 month, what do you call it? 13 month bonus? What is it called? Yeah, it's just they call it the thirteenth month. The thirteenth um, month, that yeah. that's all built into that um, pay uh, that they'd be getting, um, uh, you know, and and that's in contrast to you know we've had uh, some folks on the podcast that have uh, Mike Jackness comes to mind where he actually rents uh, a house in somewhere in the Philippines where the all of the his VAs go to work and some of them travel hours to go there and spend the week there and they do a week on week off or something like that which to me when he described it is overly complex and complicated and probably still not within the laws uh in the Philippine uh because you're supposed to 
be paying taxes and benefits and things of this nature, well, which you can do um, by using an agency like staff outsourcing or, you know, admittedly, what, you know, we just work direct like you do, Reggie, with our, our current VAs. But I think I think that 13th month and the health benefits creates loyalty beyond um, what you can pay uh, for. Uh, it, even money's not everything to these folks. Sometimes, you know, like the, the my my top VA, it's it's not necessarily about the money. It's about the satisf- satisfaction with the work that she's doing and growing and improving herself. So yeah, thousand, thousand right. percent. Let, let's let's get into my issue, which I'm, I'm sure is many of the folks issue again, Reggie, which is some of the some of what you're doing with um, Asana and whatnot in terms of how to like how to assign the task, like as a, a virtual assistant, which in my case, Deb is, she does my social media stuff. She does a lot of different things, but sometimes I have trouble coming up with things for her to do because I feel like it's as many entrepreneurs do, it's almost more work for me to create the SOPs than to just do it myself. So how do you overcome those things? How do you manage that? Yeah, it's definitely, you know, we think about business as a collection of systems and we think about systems the way there's a quote that I really love is we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. So having good SOPs and standard operating procedures really embedded in in your business, I think are is really foundational from a remote management perspective of moving those business processes forward. So one of the things that I require as soon as I hire a virtual assistant is they learn two two things immediately within the first hour of working with me. They're provided an SOP, which teaches them what I call workflow. And that is how do you communicate to me, the team, on what channels, where and when? How do you look at tasks that are higher priority? Um, that are more reoccurring. So literally within the first hour, they know how to work, when to work, uh, and in what in what order, which is super important. The next thing I teach them is the importance of an SOP, how to create a standard operating procedure extremely quickly, how to make their own, and uh, how to share that with the team. And when they have those two things good to go, literally within the first hour, you, you set the foundation for a virtual assistant to do what I call to do anything. I have a, a course called how to train a virtual assistant to do anything. And when you teach them how to build an SOP, they can go out and build an SOPs that you don't even know how to do on, on tasks you don't know how to do. So the easiest way I, I, I like to explain it is I use a Google Doc and it's super easy. There's all types of software out there that will create SOPs. There's SOP libraries out there. But the reality is you you have to use a software that virtual assistants and people even outside of your organization may not have access to, don't understand how to use. If you're using a Google Drive, and what I do is I use a software called Loom, and what it is is a, a screen recording tool. So all I will do, for example, if I am creating, if I'm trying to make a website logo, let's call it like a yoga logo, what I'll do is I'll pull up a couple of tabs. I'll look at maybe some competitor logos that I want to make. I'll maybe even type in on Google, you know, um, steps to create a logo. And I'll just say, hey, this, this is the logo I'm trying to create. This is what it looks like. Here are the steps. And here's a link to a YouTube video. I would like you to go through this video. And what they'll do is with that video link, I'll put that into the SOP, like a template. I'll have my virtual assistant go through and they'll break down that video into steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five to completion. And what I'll do is I'll review that SOP. If it looks good to go, then uh, that becomes a foundational SOP that the team can use. And what that does is it teaches a virtual assistant. It reinforces the SOP creation. They take ownership of the task. They break down the task themselves. They end up fixing parts that, one, I may not understand as someone who doesn't create logos. Uh, Two, they have the time and space to figure it out. Uh, I also have an SOP called how to solve problems. And it sounds super basic, but my how to solve problems SOP and my how to create an SOP are super foundational. They provided the most value to people out there. But when they know how to solve their own problems, you give them the time and the space and the positive work culture to do that. And they have a good foundational system to create an SOP, which can just just as easily be look it up on YouTube because there's so many training and resources now out there for free. Look it up on YouTube, break it down in the steps, send it to me for review. If it looks good to go, that becomes a foundational SOP and I can put that at different points of my business and the tasks start to get done themselves. 
And when it comes to the task idea creation, you're right, there's a, th- a thousand things that a virtual assistant can do. You know, just because you have a virtual assistant that's trained on, let's say, print on demand or making t-shirt designs, does not mean that they can't set up an automation on your MailChimp. You know, there, there are so many videos out there that walk you through. There's so many videos on, on Amazon FBA, step one through 50, you know, the, the full two-hour checklist on how to do Amazon FBA. There's so many these, of these types of how-to training videos that someone does not have to be a web developer, master coder to, to build a website. There, the tools and the software out there allow you to leverage uh, low-cost virtual assistants to accomplish high-quality work as long as you give them the time, the space, and the system to do so. Interesting. Uh, some of the courses you're talking about are available on your website, right? ReggieYoung.com forward slash vault. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so for me personally, I, I put all of my knowledge and courses behind a monthly subscription, which I call the vault. And you can sign up for that. It's $18 a month or like $500 for life. One time you get access to my entire course library. But specifically, as we talk about virtual assistants, I have two courses. One is how to hire and train virtual assistants. And what that is, is a plug and play system for anyone to use that can come up off the ground, have a, an understanding of basic project management, a, a foundation for project management, all the SOPs to, to hire a virtual assistant, get one trained up very quickly. And to understand from a business owner's perspective, some principles of, of remote management, uh, you know, that come down to you know, 80, 20 rule, critical path, all these like really foundational pieces that are really helpful when you outsource remotely to another country. I have all the training for that. And then I also have a training for virtual assistants. And it's the training that I've created over the last five to seven years. When I hire someone brand new, I personally, it's really hard. And it's a problem. I see a lot of people when they try and scale past one, you know, not everyone has a budget for $700 VA or $800 VA. And the problem is when you hire one VA and that virtual assistant is sick or you know, life happens or, you know, you need to need projects to move faster. Having a team of three allows so much more speed in your business. And when you hire one, generally speaking, they can only do one thing. So the problem I always came across when I was starting to hire virtual assistants is, again, I would hire for one task, but I would, to keep them gainfully employed, I didn't want them to do a ton of different things. So I created training that's says, hey, these are, these are the basics of Shopify. These are the basics of keyword research. These are the basics of email management, customer support. Here's how we work together. Here's how we secure files uh, within the business. And I have a course specifically for that. So if anyone decides to sign up, what they can do is literally sign up, go through my course on how to hire a virtual assistant. And then once they hire a virtual assistant, give that virtual assistant access to the vault and they can take the course on what I call basic uh, virtual assistant training and they'll have the foundation of all these things because when you really leverage a virtual assistant let's say who's doing a social media management but they don't understand the foundation of what keywords are right they, they could at, they end up making a less than optimal piece of content if they understood how to use shopify or the basics of a wordpress site you could leverage your virtual assistants beyond content creation and now they can become the person who posts it at scale and does it in a way in which they understand these things, um, these foundational SEO, even take it a step further to setting up an automation to make sure that an email push happens automatically. Even though they don't know how to do any of this, there's so many tutorials out there and software that's easy to leverage where you can take a virtual assistant who's never done it before. Like in my case, my, one of my best VAs who's a security, who was a uh, security officer at, at the airport. And now he literally can do everything. He does content creation, he does website design, he has things I've never done before because he thinks critically, has strong internet, uh, good positive work culture, and I give him the time and space to do it. All stuff I need to do with my own VAs for sure, because um, trying to figure out what tasks they're going to do is part of the issue I have uh, and, and uh, teaching them how to do different things. There's things that I uh, can be doing and should be doing that I'm not because A, I don't have the time and B, I haven't taken the time to create an SOP to teach the VAs how to do it. And I, like you said, I mean, if they had a a, a task to go learn how to do it, if I just gave them that directive, they would do it. But uh, it sounds like uh, you've got some good courses there at uh, reggieyoung.com for us vault. Uh, Reggie, I appreciate your time today. This is valuable information. Uh, Personally, I think 
uh, the value of VAs. Uh, it's 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 a multitude of ways that they benefit people in growing their business and improving the value of their business as well. When it comes to a simple multiple of discretionary earnings, if you're if you've got uh, you know a couple of VAs replacing one person and you're spending half the amount of money uh, and saving thirty thousand dollars a year and your business is worth four times, it's adding one hundred twenty thousand dollars value to the business, and you're probably getting more output from the VAs as well. So there's lots of different perks and benefits. Um, check out reggieyoung.com forward slash vault, folks. Uh, go to onlinejobs.ph to check out uh, that uh, hiring platform. Uh, and then uh, staffoutsourcing.com as well. Reggie, appreciate your time today. Look forward to uh, catching up in the near future. Awesome. Thanks a lot for having me, Joe. Really appreciate it.